name is Roger Epstein. I'm the guest host for Asia in Review today, and it's my great pleasure to be here with Xinhua Di. He's our visiting lawyer from China, and we're going to talk about the uh, visiting lawyer program that we've had uh, with China now going on eight years in the legal community here. Uh, Xinhua is our latest visiting lawyer. He's here for three months and uh, came October 1st. We'll be here through the end of the year. And uh, we're going to talk to you today about a few things. The program, give you a little history and background of the program. We're going to let Xinhua talk about his growing up years in China and how he became a lawyer and uh, uh, what made him interested in coming to the program and uh, uh, how he's found it since he's been here and then talk a little bit about uh, the relationship that this creates between Hawaii and China and the United States and China. Uh, Xinhua, welcome. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Ah, oh, aloha. I'm, I'm Xinhua Di, the visiting lawyer from Suzhou, China. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, Roger, thank you so much. You bring me uh, here. Uh, I have a chance to visit Hawaii and uh, give me a very amazing experience here. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, well, so wonderful. Well, we're delighted to have you, Xinhua. Let me give the uh, audience a little background about the visiting lawyer program. Uh, I got involved uh, in 19, uh, not 19, 2007. Mm. And at that time, there was a lawyer in Shanghai. His name is Richard Xu. He's a very amazing guy who was uh, uh, an engineer for 25 years with the Chinese government. Oh, God. And in 1980, they asked him if he would become an international lawyer. Mm. Uh, China didn't even have written laws until 1983. Yeah, I think so. But in 1980, the Chinese national government asked him to go to Dallas for a year oh. and Seattle for a year to learn oh, about God. international law. Yeah. And then they began writing laws, and Richard was uh, involved. He actually had a, a law school for a while in China. Oh, good. But in, in 2007, uh, he was meeting with Mark Shklov, who is... Uh, one of the co-founders of the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. Yeah. And they were talking in Shanghai, and Richard was saying, you know, uh, we have so many lawyers in China. They're very smart. They're very hardworking. They're doing huge transactions, but they're all between 35 and 40 years of age. Mm. Because in the Cultural Revolution, there were not people trained to become lawyers who would then be in the 40 to 60 age group. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, so uh, Richard said to Mark, look, uh, what about you uh, getting the Hawaii community to take some lawyers and come and, and mentor them a little bit? Uh, there's many senior lawyers here. And so Mark came back, talked to me. I I'm uh, uh, the most senior partner in the largest law firm here, the Cade Shuddy Law Firm. And uh, I have a long history with Hong Kong and Chinese studies. And uh, I was very interested to see how this program might go. Mm. So back in 2008, we began taking our first Chinese lawyer. Oh, oh, that, that's, a, that's a long way. It's a, it seems like a long time ago. Yeah, well, we yeah. have uh, 15 alumni now. Oh, 15. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so uh, we took a lawyer, and uh, she came for three months. Mm -hmm and uh, uh, was very interested in, in how it went. Went back to China, has been practicing law now for some time. Okay. In 2011, mm -hmm. the Huangpu Judicial District in Shanghai. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shanghai uh, uh, is a very large city of 25 million people, and there's about 25 or 30,000 lawyers there. And the Huangpu Judicial District is an agency in China, mm -hmm. government agency, that's responsible for Chinese lawyers in the, the west central part of Shanghai. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And so uh, uh, we agreed with the uh, government. Mm. In fact, my office, Cade Shuddy, has a written agreement with the government in Shanghai that we'll take two Shanghaiese lawyers every year. 
Oh, yeah, that's so amazing. Yeah. So I thought it was amazing that the government had enough interest that they actually wanted us to take lawyers to come and learn about the U.S. law, learn about cross-border transactions, and uh, begin to understand uh, more about how lawyering is done in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, uh, we also worked out an agreement between the Shanghai Bar and the Hawaii State Bar. Mm. Now, Shanghai, uh, 25 million people, it's more equivalent to New York City. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But they still were interested enough in connecting with Hawaii mm. because of our relationship with them and because we had developed this uh, visiting lawyer program. Yeah, that's right. In 2012, one of our lawyers from the Visiting Lawyer Program mm -hmm. uh, uh, took myself and Mark Shklov, who was one of the founders of uh, uh, this program, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Larry Foster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Y you know Larry. He, mm -hmm. he was the dean of the UH Law School. Yeah, that's right. He's a professor now. Yeah. And uh, his wife, Brenda, was the CEO of the U.S. Shanghai Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, that's right. Larry had been living in China off and on for nine years. Mm. And uh, so the three of us and uh, another immigration lawyer went up to Suzhou. We gave some talks. We met the Bar Association there. And uh, uh, we met the Suzhou Judicial District in Suzhou as you know, as a, a practitioner in Suzhou. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, there are 13 million people in Suzhou, which is about a half hour by train north and west of Shanghai. Mm, yeah, that's right. And so uh, uh, we met the Bar Association there. They became very interested in uh, what we were doing in Shanghai and mm. wanted to replicate it. So it took a couple of years before we worked through uh, uh, the paperwork and getting all the parties to agree and then just last May uh, we reached an agreement between the Hawaii bar and the Sujo bar yeah and we also agreed with the Sujo judicial district yeah, that's right. that we would take two visiting lawyers so mm. now we're taking lawyers uh, every th every three months yeah that's right and uh, you will recall, of course, <laughs> that I yeah. interviewed you in May <laughs> yeah. uh, to see if you were interested in uh, coming here. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm so glad to hear about it. Uh, yeah, I always... How did you hear about it, Xinhua? Uh, you know, uh, in 2007, I visit America for the first time. Uh -huh. And uh, that time, I'm, I'm the one member of the Jiangsu delegation of the senior lawyers dealing with the foreign related matters. Uh -huh. Jiangsu is a is a province in Ch in China. Uh, yeah. Nearby Shanghai. Yeah, and that's right. A hundred million people in Jiangsu. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, you know, at that time there are so many Chinese companies were sued by American companies uh -huh. uh, about uh, trade disputes. So the government think, oh. Uh, we should send some lawyers to America, try to, ne try to learn something about how to deal with it for the Chinese companies. Uh, that's a good thing. So that's why I was dispatched to D.C. The government in, in, in Jiangsu province asked you to come or uh, co collected a group of people and yeah. asked them to go. Yeah. And, and were these suits uh, Chinese doing business in the United States or mostly Americans doing business in China? Uh, you know, uh, China is a world factory and exports so many products into different countries, especially America. Mm -hmm. So that's about trade. Uh -huh. Yeah, about trade. So uh, mostly products manufactured yeah, in China, yeah, that's sold right. in the United States. Yeah, that's right. Americans got unhappy and sued the Chinese. Yeah, that's right. And so the government in China is saying, Hey, what's going on here? We're, we're, we're missing something. We're not understanding how business is done in the United States, or we need to learn more about it, and why don't we send a group of lawyers over there to get a better understanding? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I really learned so, so much about the trade dispute, and after I came back, I, uh, ha I had a talk with my clients, and uh, you know some clients was really sued by the American companies and finally lost the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in America. Mm -hmm. So that's so terrible, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so uh, some clients will think, oh, maybe it's a good way for, for, for me to move 
uh, outside of China uh, to make some investment, uh, maybe in America, mm -hmm. and uh, manufacture products in America. And so there's no trade dispute. So they set up their own company. Yeah, yeah, so, that's right. So what was happening was the Americans were ordering products from China, mm -hmm. or they were buying products from China. Yeah. And then they were unhappy. So now your clients come back. To, you come back to them, and they say, "Why don't I do my own business in the United States?" Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to sue myself. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. So uh, at first they they think about it, but but you know it's very hard for a Chinese company to make investment into America. It's not so easy, mm -hmm. uh, even for a Chinese lawyer. Uh, if you don't know, don't understand uh, how to do uh, how to do business in in America, uh, so it's n it's not so easy. So you know, I I know much more about uh, foreign investment into China. Yeah, but just a little about uh -huh. Chinese investment into America. So you know, when I heard about it, yeah. Uh, I received the uh, notice from the Suzhou Bar Association. Oh, I think, oh, I, that's just uh, what I want. Uh -huh. So I, I, I came to the Bar Association, I told them I want this opportunity. And then I was interviewed by you. And uh, I'm so glad, uh, Roger, you gave me this chance to, to come here to try to learn something. Terrific. Thank yeah, you, Shimon. Yeah. We're going to take a break now. Okay. And then we'll come back. We'll talk some more about this. And, and I want to talk more about your background and, and how you grew up in China and what that was like that got you to become a lawyer in China. Okay. I'm very glad. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward to, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia, and by Asia we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world, uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and of course you can check out our archives on YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you like. Why should you do that? Because this is an arts show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with uh, artists of various ilk. We talk with painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, uh, uh, actors, of course. And we don't on only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. We'll see you Center Stage. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, Think Tech Asia in Review. And uh, we're speaking with Xinhua Di. Uh, who's a visiting lawyer from China for three months. We just talked with Xinhua about uh, uh, why he wanted to come to this program and his background, and fascinating that uh, uh, you were finding your clients were just looking for another way to do business, outbound investment from China uh, to the United States instead of just shipping goods over here. Mm. And so you decided to uh, interview for the program uh, and... Uh, Myself and a few others came over, uh, thought you would be perfect for it, and uh, here you are, starting in uh, October 1st. You've been yeah. here a little over a month now. Yeah. Xinhua, uh, tell us about life in China a little bit and, and what it was like. You know, Americans have so many different views about China. You were born uh, just as China was opening up in 1979. Yeah. And so didn't experience some of the things that your parents experienced and others yeah. during the Cultural Revolution. Your whole yeah. life really has been since Deng Xiaoping took over and
and uh, uh, China's been uh, much more of an open, uh, certainly an economically open place. So give us a little bit. Where were you, where were you born? Uh, I was born in Changzhou, also in Jiangsu province. And uh, it's, it's very close to Suzhou. Mm. And uh, I, I think uh, for me um, and uh, the younger generation, we are the first uh, generation. Mm, we are so lucky because uh, when I was born and the China um, began to open up mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, at that time, China tried to l learn something from different countries, especially the, uh, especially America, because uh, Chinese people think, oh, America is the uh, strong, strongest uh, nation or the richest nation in the world. So if you want to make make move forward, and you have to learn something from America, mm -hmm. yeah. So your experience as a China now this was a small town in Jiangsu Province. How many people in the city? Uh, uh, maybe 10 million. 10 million? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a small city. Uh, yeah, it's okay, a small okay. city, yeah. A small city, okay. Yeah. So, so a big city, but w was it rural? Was it, wh where, what was your family, uh, uh, what did you, what'd your parents, uh, what kind of work were they doing? Uh, you know, uh, at first, my, uh, my, my father was a teacher. Ah. Uh, b but, but finally, uh, he worked in a company, uh -huh. and you know, at that time, because if you worked in a company, you earned much more than uh -huh. than a teacher. Uh -huh. So you know, I have my sisters. So uh, for my parents, they they try to want to get more money uh -huh. and uh, try uh -huh. to give uh, give the good and good education uh, for for their kids. Yeah. Was the education free? Your public education or your your uh, pre-college education? Uh, or yeah. You had to pay for it? Yeah, you know, uh, in China, uh, you don't don't worry about the the education fees uh, for the first uh, nine years. Mm -hmm. And if you go to high school, if you go to uh, university, mm -hmm. you have to pay uh, for for yourself. I see. Yeah. So there is a fee once you get to uh, 10 years old, you're about in, uh, uh, you have another nine years, so you're, you're in middle school or mm. just at the end of what we would call elementary school. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, how much did you pay? I, uh, I, I cannot remember the exact number, but I guess maybe a few thousand renminbi. A few thousand renminbi, yeah, so about yeah. $300, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe that's right. something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then you went to school in, in, in that, what's the name of the town? Uh, Your city. Yeah, 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 Changzhou. Changzhou. Yeah. So you went to, you went to uh, and then you, where did you go to college? Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, in China, uh, when, when you want to go to the university, mm -hmm. you must first choose the, the university you want to go to mm -hmm. uh, before the final examination. Yeah, and, uh, and because there are many teachers are from the Suzhou University, mm -hmm. so I made my final decision that I wanted to go to Suzhou, and uh, you know Suzhou is very close to my hometown, yeah. Changzhou, and uh, you know Suzhou also uh, the two paradises in China <laughs> because there there are so many small gardens, very beautiful scenery, yeah. and also a big lake. Yes. So I think that's a good place to, a good place to go for to me, college. yeah, and to go to college. And it has a good reputation, and it's uh, one of the older schools in China? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the Suzhou University is a very, has a long history. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, uh, till now, uh, it has over one, 100 years uh, uh, history. And was it hard to get in? Uh, was it competitive? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah, Be because the law school in Suzhou University is very famous, mm. and uh, I think maybe it's one of the three best law mm. schools in mm. Jiangsu province, mm. Mm. So, so think I think that's a good choice for me. Y you, yeah. you, you, you knew you wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, when I was in high school, there are so many uh, movies, uh, TV series uh, from different countries 
uh, from different regions, um, uh, American, Hong Kong, and uh, British. Mm. Uh, you know, at that time, I, I, I saw so many lawyers uh, appeared in the court. Mm -hmm. And I think, oh, they are so cool. <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes uh, the lawyer know everything. And sometimes he can decide the whole life of one person. Uh. So I think, oh, that's a good choice to be a, <laughs> to be a lawyer. So I decided I, I should go to the law school. So now, uh, Sue Jo, uh, to become a lawyer, you, uh, you don't go to college for four years and then go to graduate school. You learn the law. You get a, a degree in law in the undergraduate school. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So is it four years, and then you've completed the university, and then you can go practice law? Uh, you know, if you, if you have your law degree mm -hmm. and uh, or other uh, bachelor degree, mm -hmm. uh, not law, but, but you have some knowledge about the law, yeah. you can sign up to uh, to attend the final examination. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, but the examination is not just a, the bar examination. Uh, it's the national judicial examination, mm -hmm. uh, not just for lawyers, but for the judges and uh, prosecutors. So after you passed the examination, you have to find a job in a local law firm mm -hmm. and uh, to be a a practice a lawyer for one year mm -hmm. and after that uh, you were you will be licensed to be a lawyer and at that time you can practice practice law in China uh, so you don't worry about mm, yet because I know in America you have to practice in the specific state Mm -hmm. but, but that's different in China. You it's a national. Yeah. You take the national exam, then yeah. you get a job, a, apprentice. We might call that an apprentice for one year. Yeah, that's right. And then you take another exam, or then you get your license. Do yeah, you, yeah, that's right. Do you need to take another exam at the end of one year? Uh, no, no. It, it just apply for the uh, lawyer's license. I see. Yeah, that's okay. I yeah. see. Uh, what percentage of the lawyers, do you have an idea, people that take the national lawyer's exam at the end of university, well, what percentage pass? Do you have any sense of that? Uh, yeah, the last year uh, is 10%. Ten, ten ten, only 10% ten yeah. of people take the exam pass? Uh, yeah, that's right. Oh. That's right. So, uh, you know, some, sometimes the Chinese people say, oh, uh, maybe the uh, judicial examination, maybe the uh, hardest yeah. Uh, examination. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the country. Yeah, that's I right. I know in Japan it's the same way, very low percentage, yeah, maybe under 10 percent. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so then you, you got a job with a law firm, and, are, and you've been practicing now for 12, 13 years? Uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, I practice law from 2002. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, it's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been practicing since 1972. Uh, oh, so was, I started 30 oh, years God. before you, and I was with the government for five years before that. So yours seems like a very short time. Uh, Xinhua, what were your expectations about coming over here, and what have you found since you're here mm -hmm. about the uh, being in the United States and the difference between American law and the law you see in China? Yeah, you know, uh, China and America have the different legal system. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, sometimes I think, oh, it, it's not so easy to be a lawyer in America because you have to read so many cases mm -hmm. because the judge uh, gives their final decision based on the previous cases. Is that right? Yeah, well, yeah. in China, there's it's a civil law country, yeah, yeah. which means everything is decided on the basis of statutes and regulations. Yeah, that's in right. In the United States, we have the statutes and regulations. We also have all the cases become precedent for the next uh, decisions, future decisions. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like that in, uh, in, in China and other civil law countries. So yes, there's a lot more material that you have to read, and there's different courts and uh, it, it is quite uh, complex. And have you been able to work on any cases since you've been here, or, or go to the courts, or see what what the, what that's like? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Mark, 
Mark uh, took me to the Mark Schlock, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mark took me to the different uh, court, mm -hmm. uh, the Supreme Court of the state, mm -hmm. uh, the federal district court, the circuit court, the district court, uh, and let me have have some idea about how the judges uh, work, how the lawyers work here, and uh, you know, uh, some some time I feel something uh, familiar. Uh, y you know, because uh, for the Chinese uh, legal profession, uh, maybe some courts, they try to learn something from America. Mm -hmm. So I think may maybe uh, sometimes they have uh, really learned something about the procedure uh, here, uh, although the, uh, the case was judged by the, uh, by the code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very uh, valuable experience for me. Uh, t to see, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you you br you bring me here, and uh, now I stayed in Kate's, Kate's and Shelley, and uh, I I have so many time to have a talk with lawyers in Kate's, and uh, you know that's 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 a valuable experience because uh, through the talking with them, I can really learn a lot, yeah. Uh, we've also got you involved somewhat in uh, 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 drafting documents, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you uh, helped set up a company. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, How's that differing from what, what goes on in China? How hard is it to set up a company there compared to in the United States? Uh, yeah, you know, if 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 the uh, foreign investment uh, into China want to tr uh, establish a new company, and you have to prepare uh, much more documents, mm. uh, I think maybe the 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 different thing. But but in recent years, uh, the process is, is very simple, and uh, because the the government. Uh, give away many powers, and uh, maybe sometime you can just go to the uh, commercial agency and uh, give them some paper, and okay, a new company now is established. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of how we do it here now. Yeah, yeah, I think I, so. It seems to me that China has copied a lot of practices, as you said, they learned some procedures from here. It seems like they've done a good job of uh, trying to take the best practices from around the world. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, if you read some laws, and uh, you will feel oh, a little bit familiar, because uh, Chinese government uh, takes them back and uh, try to uh, learn something and try to let them fit uh, into China, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do too. I think it's a it's very impressive that China has tried to improve the practices there. And uh, when we come back, we're going to take one more break. When okay. we come back, uh, we'll talk a little more about uh, uh, go, uh, the, the law system here and in China. And we'll also talk about what we're hoping to do, uh, work together with you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, when you go back to China. Yeah. So let's take a quick break now. We'll, okay. we'll come back. Okay. Hi, my name is Cindy Matsuki, and I host High Growth with HTDC, where we talk about all things tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing, because there are tons of things that are happening in Hawaii in those fields, and we like to share them with you because people, more people should know about them. The show broadcasts live every other Tuesday at 3 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii, and tune in, and we'll see you then. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Roy Kordani, and every Wednesday at 1 p.m., I host Life in the Law, which is a segment of Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, basically, I host guests who have some relevancy to law in Hawaii. And uh, I hope you will continue to tune in. If you have questions, tweet us at Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo.
Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for uh, joining us. I'm uh, Roger Epstein here at Think Tech Asian Review. I'm the guest host for today. And I'm here with uh, Xinhua Di, who is our visiting lawyer from China, mm -hmm. uh, in particular, Suzhou, China. He's the second visiting lawyer from Suzhou. Yeah. And uh, we're really hoping to develop relationships with Suzhou. Just to explain to the audience a little bit, uh, Xinhua, uh, Suzhou, as I mentioned, is about a half hour north and west of Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And Shanghai is, is, is such a big city. Yeah. And it's more like uh, New York City, at least yeah, in my why. view, quite a bit like New York City. Yeah. Uh, Suzhou, yeah. which you mentioned, is famous for being very beautiful, gardens mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, beautiful surrounding mountains and Taihu Lake. Yeah. Uh, but also, Suzhou, I would say, is not as sophisticated a city as uh, Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And in, in uh, Shanghai, there's about uh, 25 to 30,000 lawyers. Yeah. And in Suzhou, there's about 2,500 to 3,000 lawyers. Mm. And so our relationship with Suzhou uh, uh, could be a lot stronger. I think uh, uh, there's probably more need in Suzhou to connect with uh, uh, lawyers in in Hawaii. Yeah, that's right. And that our relationship could 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 develop quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we do have an agreement between the Sujo Bar and the Hawaii Bar, mm -hmm. and we're taking a couple of lawyers a year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, let's talk about what what I see how this might work. Uh, uh, the, the lawyers, the, the, the clients in, in, in Suzhou are mm -hmm. really interested, as you say now, in outbound investment. Yeah, that's right. Can you tell us a little bit about what the government in China thinks about outbound investment? Uh, you know, uh, in recent years, uh, China government try, try to encourage uh, the private companies uh, go outside. Mm. That's, that's a policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So, for Chinese companies, they are, they are very familiar with their go-out policy, yeah. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, Suzhou is one of the manufacturing centers in China and uh, ranked five, uh, judged by GDP. It's the fifth largest GDP yeah. city in the country. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. That's right. I bet a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, so there are so many clients uh, of our law firm, especially from the manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. And in the past 10 years, uh, they really earned much money, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. And, but, but you know, it has changed. Uh, the, the labor cost, uh, the land cost has rised s rapidly. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the competition in the Chinese market, oh, it is very, it's very high. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for them, they will, they will think about it. I have money. I really want to uh, make some investment. Maybe that's a good choice to go outside China. Mm -hmm. And because at first uh, the China government tried to encourage them to do so mm -hmm. and uh, give some, uh, give some uh, policy, and. Uh, uh, for them, that's a good idea because uh, you can go outside, make some investment, try to get a benefit from it. Uh, so that's why I, I want to be here, want, want to come here. You see this coming. Yeah, And I've yeah. heard this from many Chinese yeah, lawyers. And yeah, that's right. So I've been going there every six months since 2011, and every time I go, it seems that there's more emphasis on outbound investment. Yeah. There is an issue that I think many of our viewers are familiar with, which is it's hard to get money out of China. Mm -hmm. uh, is the government eased up on uh, uh, changing renminbi for dollars? Has that gotten easier? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. In recent years, uh, China government has established so many uh, free zoo, free trade zoo in China. Free trade zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So. Uh, the the restric restrictions uh, placed on the private companies now uh, lo lose, and uh, so it's 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 much easy for the private company to go outside, and 
you know, uh, when I uh, come here, uh, I, I think Hawaii is a very great place uh, for the tourists. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, oh, why not uh, doing some business here? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you, uh, you're doing business here means you can get benefit from it. At the same time, you can enjoy your life in the paradise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the third paradise. Yeah, yeah, Suzhou, that's right. Hanzhou and Hawaii. That's right. Uh, so after I uh, go back to China, at first I will have a talk with my clients. Uh, told them uh, everything uh, I learned, I heard, I see, I saw in Hawaii and uh, give, give them some general idea and after they have some idea, maybe I, I should give some uh, speech about uh, professional service, uh, such as legal service, taxation, and uh, immigration, and uh, some opportunities for making investment. I think that's good. And if they are interested in this, and I will tr try to bring them back to Hawaii, yeah. and, uh, and um, lead them to meet some friends here, and uh, talk, have a talk with some uh, government agency uh, officials. I, I think that's a good opportunity well, for them. Well, you know, uh, we've talked about this. When I was in uh, Suzhou in yeah, May, yeah. Uh, actually, no, just on this last trip, I was there in October. Yeah, that's right. And I met with uh, the managing partner in your yeah, office. Yeah. And she said, you represent the Fu Fujian Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, that's right. And she was wanting to get together a group of people mm -hmm. to come over here. Yeah. And uh, after you've explained to them what's going on, they would come over and meet not only with government officials, mm -hmm. but with people that uh, have investments that they might want to make. And, yeah. And maybe have a little seminar at uh, my office about immigration and tax law. And then with the idea of either investing here or someplace else in the United States, but mm -hmm. Hawaii as a central place yeah. to, to really begin to understand what, what opportunities are available. Yeah, that's right. So this is something I think we can, we can really work together on in the future. And, and not just my office, we're trying to do more uh, uh, with more of the legal community to take on other visiting lawyers. And yeah, that's right. See if we can really uh, grow this relationship between Sujo and uh, Hawaii. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I think uh, try to bring the Chinese comp companies here, make some investment that will put uh, the law firms uh, in, in China, in America, closer. And, uh, you know, uh, you know mm, uh, when, when I was in Suzhou and uh, the clients were, were, uh, were trust you, and uh, even though they want to go outside, mm -hmm. they want to uh, s to seek some legal advice from you, even though you are not an uh, American lawyer. Right. Yeah. So they have a long relationship. Yeah, with that's you. right. So, yeah. so for me, uh, I come here, uh, try to find some friends, and try to find some good law firm. And uh, if if my clients have 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 the chance to come here. And uh, I can give them give them some introduction. So, yeah, and then we can collaborate. There's many things that I've been working on that I I know we'll collaborate on in the future. There's yeah. there's uh, Chinese who are coming here just to buy real estate. Maybe they want to have a condominium, like you say, tourist. Oh. So that involves issues of our estate tax mm -hmm. and and uh, other concerns about their immigration to come and stay here periodically. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's a, a number of Chinese who want to have their children educated over here. And so some of them want to uh, maybe even have the wife emigrate here so that she can stay with the kids while they're in school. And that creates other issues and issues that involve uh, their assets back in China. Mm -hmm. So you and I can collaborate on that level. This is what we're doing with other law firms in China. We'll continue to do that. And then there are people who want to come here and just make investments, like we were talking about some of your clients and mm -hmm. these uh, group from uh, Fujian. Yeah. And that involves both Chinese issues and U.S. issues. So what I like about this is working with the Chinese lawyers, you can help them on their side, 
that the Chinese issue yeah, of investments, right. and you also can give them some confidence mm -hmm. that you know lawyers on this side, yeah, people yeah. that you trust. Yeah, because it's all about trust. Yes, that's right. It's so hard to make an investment in a foreign country. It's hard to make an investment in your own country. <laughs> that really works out well. Yes, but that's in right. in a foreign country where we have these relationships, uh, uh, that you can trust the people on the other side, it makes it a lot easier. Yes, that's right. Uh, simply speaking, yeah, my clients trust me, trust my law firm, and I, I came here, I trust Roger, you are my mentor. Mentor, and uh, I trust your law firm because your your law firm is a, uh, you know, is is a very good law firm in Hawaii. So I I think that's the logic. And that's how we build yeah. relationships. Yeah. And it's not just you and I and Caves. There's many other law firms and and much more as the volume of investment grows. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of and I know in other places in the United States, I'm told that in. Uh, Orange County, more than half oh. of the residential transactions in the last two years have been Chinese buyers. Oh, good. And similarly, in New York City and, and some of the uh, outlying communities in New York, there's huge amounts of Chinese. Oh, buyers. that's so great. So we're not seeing quite so many, but it's beginning to flow here more. Yeah, that's right. And in this context, I also want to talk to you about uh, something we've, we've mentioned, uh, we've talked about internally. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in Suzhou in October, yeah. I met with the Suzhou Arbitration Commission. Yeah. And uh, we talked about an idea that they were very excited about, was an arbitration uh, between uh, Suzhou and Hawaii uh, with respect to an international uh, uh, transaction. Mm. And so you mentioned a lot of lawsuits, and, and I think we can expect that they're gonna continue. If you're an American, you don't want to do uh, an arbitration in China. Mm -hmm. And if you're Chinese, you don't want to do it in the United States. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, a lot of that is going to Singapore and Hong Kong, mm -hmm. but the Suzhou government has an arbitration commission, yeah. and they're interested in making that an international arbitration yeah, that's right. and, and uh, center mm -hmm. and, and developing its reputation. Hawaii's looking to do the same thing. Hmm. We're looking to set up an international arbitration center here. So what we talked about was, on one side, the Chinese uh, uh, business person mm -hmm. could, could select a Chinese arbitrator yeah. or mediator, if that's it, but an arbitrator, and the U.S. people could select a, a, a U.S. arbitrator. Mm. And then the arbitrators could pick a third one, or we could use somebody in yeah. Singapore. Yeah. But each party would be in its own country with its own chosen arbitrator mm -hmm. and feel like they're not totally out of uh, uh, sync with what's going on or totally at the mercy of the other country. So we're talking about doing a pilot project now to see what that looks like, a video conference arbitration mm -hmm. with half the side, the Chinese side in Suzhou and the American side in Hawaii and uh, uh, see if we can make that work. What are the bugs in that kind of thing? And, and there are a number of issues that will come up. Uh, but uh, do you think that will be interesting in China? Do you think uh, you would like to practice that if, you, if your law firm was going to be involved with it? Oh, yeah, lawyer, it's a, it's, a, it's a good idea. I think lawyers or law firms will be interested in this, this uh, idea. Yeah, you know, uh, if there if there's uh, some companies Especially one is Chinese, one is American. Right. And uh, you know, Chinese uh, Chinese wants this, and American wants that. Yeah. So maybe we can bring it here. You know, I uh, you know Hawaii I is different compared with the ma mainland America because I think there are so many uh, Asians living here, and there are so many Asian cultures. And if Chinese or Chinese company come here, they will feel familiar with it. Yeah. And yeah. you know, uh, if, if Chinese think, oh, that's, that's a place uh, I'm familiar with, I, I'm willing to come here. So some and might come here, and yeah. some we might do by this video conferencing. Yeah. And, and what, I'm, uh, what I'm hoping we'll find is a way uh, that people will be comfortable in their mm -hmm. own jurisdiction, or as you say, come here. Mm -hmm. uh, Hawaii is one of the few places, maybe the only place in the U.S. where you could do it video conferencing because yeah. of the timing. 
Mm -hmm. So it's nine o'clock in the morning. People yeah. coming in China, it's still three here. Yeah, that's right. We why. could have four or five hours of arbitration before yeah. it's really too late. Yeah. Even in California, it's six o'clock. It's it's really uh, beyond the time frame. But uh, these are just some ideas, and and I know we'll have a lot more as you're here and. I'm looking forward to you being here for another month and a half. Yeah. And then going back to China and developing a good long relationship with uh, uh, the, uh, our law firm mm -hmm. and, and Hawaii and the United States. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, this will be a really uh, good long term relationship. And also bringing our countries together. Yeah, that's I right. I think you get a sense, a different sense now of what the United States is like. Uh, versus what it was like that you thought it was like before you came here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, Ch Chinese uh, think America is friends, is a friend. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, China and America are, are both uh, big nations, and uh, I think we have so many in common. So we can. Uh, you know, we can share some information, we can cooperate. And I think we can learn about each other on a level that's different than the way the governments participate. Mm. Yeah, that's right. So we're running out of time. In fact, we've run out of time. Mm -hmm. And I really want to thank you for uh, coming in today and having this discussion. I really want to thank you for taking three months out of your life and your career mm. to come and learn about Hawaii, learn about U.S. law, get to know us. And I, I know it's going to be helpful for, for all of us. And and I look forward to working together and to bringing our countries together in our own small way. Yeah. So thank you very much. For